It's simple. You suck at ABA. We all do. Let's fix that. Welcome to my three-part guide on how to stop sucking on ABA. This is the beginner's video. So same for anyone that hasn't started the game yet, or has little experience in it. If you call yourself somewhat decent, this guide won't do much for you. But you can still pick up a couple of new things from it. Just stick around for the other two bits. But let's assume you never heard of ABA. First of all, ABA is the way everyone calls Anime Battle Arena. And of the time I wasted on this depressing reality through Roblox, I have to say ABA still holds up to being one of my favorite games. I can sink hours into it every day and still find it fun. ABA has a lot of replayability, and enough to keep you busy for a while. ABA has some of my favorite combat ever. It's not as complex like Mortal Kombat, but it has enough depth to it that it doesn't get stale. The combat's a very easy to pick up system, it lets you string together your own combos. Not to say, ABA's combat is definitely smooth and more connecting than others. I'd definitely give this game a try if you're into anime or fighting games, and if both, then this game's definitely for you. The only big issue I have with ABA is that it's not very beginner friendly. There is no guide to help you learn the controls, and you get put in with no tutorial. Most of the things on YouTube don't even help anyways, which would discourage you from playing this game in the first place. That's why I made this video and that's why you're watching it. I'm gonna start from the basics and break down everything the game doesn't tell you. A lot of people are gonna press play and get thrown into casual, and they find out the game is chaotic and get discouraged because of that. So we're gonna break down every single game mode here so you don't have to find out for yourself. So let's start out with the big play button in the center of your screen. This takes you to Publix, or Casual, or Pubs for short. This is the main game mode of ABA. It is the best way to make money, and where you're going to have to start out with unfortunately if you're trying to level up. The best way to describe pubs is that you get put into a lobby full of other people playing random game modes. The game modes are something like lives, team battles, or free for all. The reason many people get discouraged from ABA is because casual is the first thing they're going to play, and casual does not have any balancing in it. Anyone can join your lobby, regardless of skill, so it can definitely ruin the game for you. So this is why I really recommend not going in here first until you learn the game to some extent. Now next up is Ranked. Once you do reach level 10, you unlock Ranked. Ranked has some of the more competitive focused game modes, like 1v1s, 2v2s, and 3v3s. The best part about Ranked is you get put with people around your skill level because there's a rank system. So it's a really good way to learn the game and something I think you should do as soon as you reach level 10. I would just go into ones and just spend a lot of time trying to learn the character you're playing and learn the game. So the next three I'm going to cover are these three at the bottom. Pro servers are like casual but with a level requirement, meaning it's going to be a sweatier version of casual. I would just leave this alone for now. Private servers are my favorite way to play the game and a lot of other people's too. In a private server you create your own lobby where you can invite other friends and anyone you want to play a variety of game modes and even some exclusive ones like Juggernaut. It is super fun to play with friends because you can do one of you wants all you want, or if you have a bunch of friends you can do crazy game modes. It's definitely something I would give a shot if you have friends you can play with. AFK World is a very underused mechanic in this game. I'm sure you played games like All Star where they have an AFK mode there and this is no different. You can get gold and XP by just leaving your computer on. Unless you the game mode you're going to want to spend a lot of time in is training and this is where we're going to be going to next. Once you're in training, you're going to want to press AFK right here. This will take you to the actual lobby of the game. Don't worry if you don't get a press it in time, just reset and make sure you press AFK right afterwards. So this is the lobby, we're going to go over some stuff here. Right here is Nami, she will take you to the AFK world. Zoro here will take you to training. This guy can buy gold off of, I would personally not buy gold in this game. Usopp can give you a random skin here, you click him for 50 and you'll get a random skin. Now this does give you dupes, so just keep that in mind. Friendly here will take you back to the main menu, basically the screen with all the play button and the rank and training. Goku here will take you to ranked. Killer B here is a game pass item. The emote shop here is where you buy your emotes. You can buy any that you want and once you do get an emote, you can equip them by pressing the settings here, then emotes, and then just picking them here. Robin's shop is just a skin shop. There are skins in this game, so you can get random skins and legendaries. You cannot get legendary skins from pulling random or common skins. Over here is Mr. Random. This guy gives you access to the prestige characters. You won't be able to touch him for a while because you need to get to level 100 to actually get a prestige character. So now that you went over the lobby, let's go over some of the UI you see here. 
This purple little gear icon lets you access the settings. This yellow button lets you turn the music on and off. Low graphics is basically if you just have a bad PC, you turn that on and it will make your game run better. Sprint mode allows you to either have a toggle sprint or hold sprint. So sprint in this game, you have to hold left shift on keyboard or you have to click in your left stick on controller. If you have your, if you have your sprint mode on hold, you have to hold down the button to actually sprint. But if it's on toggle, you have to click it once and it'll sprint for you. To stop sprinting, you just have to press it again. Awakening themes mute the music that comes from the animation when you awaken. This is really only if you just want to avoid getting copyrighted or something, so I'd keep this on. And emotes is where you can equip any emotes if you do, for example, buy them from this Vegito over here. That's the settings over here, and now we're going to go over the AFK. So if it's green, then you stay in the lobby. If it's red, that means you go to wherever the fight is. That's pretty self-explanatory. Over here is your level. There is no max level in this game. However, you should not get past 100 because you can prestige in this game. Over here is your prestige. So you probably will not have this over here, but every time you prestige, you will get an X. So this means I prestige twice. Master is just the name of the rank I have. So this right here is just your money, and now we can go over to the characters. So characters, there's a lot of them in this game, and it's pretty easy to get overwhelmed. At first, you're only going to get a few. You're only going to get this first column here and a couple over here. You're going to have to buy them, but they are free and cost zero dollars. So just check every character you can and see which ones you can get. So you will start out with Luffy here. You can see a character's moves here, and you can also see their skins they have if you do have any. And let's say you really like a skin, you can favorite it by pressing the star. I'll go over all the starter characters and make sure you know what you're doing, but let's just go with Luffy so we can actually see the training area. You're going to be spending a lot of time here too, so just press select and you'll be put into the game. So over here you have a lot to look at. You have the dummies. So these are test dummies. These have 120 health, and if you kill them, they respawn. An iframe dummy here is unhittable except for certain moves. And just so you know, iframes are invincibility frames. They're really important for certain characters because it allows you to not get hit. Super dummies is just a dummy that has infinite health. Healing dummy is like a test dummy, but these regen your health after a while. All these three dummies are just different variants of the punches. I would not worry too much about them. And these are block dummies, which you have to do a guard break to actually do anything to them. So let's go back to square one and talk about how you actually will play the game. This is very important because there's two ways to play the game, either on controller or keyboard and mouse. I personally prefer keyboard and mouse, but I played controller starting out, so I feel like I know both enough. And my recommendation to you is to use whatever you feel more comfortable with. If you mainly play on controller or on your console, then I would stick with controller. But if you feel like you play more PC, then I would stick with keyboard and mouse. Just go with whatever's more comfortable for you, so when the time does come, you don't have to relearn anything. But if you are wondering, the main difference between controller, and mouse, and keyboard is that controller is a lot easier to learn. It also has a mechanic that allows you to auto-track onto an enemy. So normally on keyboard and mouse, I would have to look at the enemy to actually look at them with my mouse. But on controller, you can simply click in the right stick and you will automatically be looking at the opponent and you can circle around them. So for example, this is like a rough idea of how to look like. And you would not have to move the right stick. You would just have to move your left stick. It's a really good way to start out and it's the way I started out. But controller in the long run always loses to keyboard and mouse because the game is designed for PC. So I want you to think of it like this. The skill floor for controller is a lot lower, meaning it's a lot easier to learn the game with controller, but the skill ceiling, which is how good you can get with the game, is a lot lower compared to keyboard and mouse, because I can tell you, the best keyboard and mouse player will always beat the best controller player in this game. It's just preference, and let's say you like both, I would just stick with keyboard and mouse then, just so you don't have to relearn the controls later on. So now that you actually chose how you want to play the game, make sure that you have somewhat good Wi-Fi, that it's not going to lag out on you. So now for the actual controls of the game. I'm going to be talking in keyboard and mouse, but I'll try my best to translate it for Xbox. But you can already see the controls on Xbox compared to keyboard and mouse, where you have to figure them out for yourself. So punching is one of the most important moves in the game. So you're going to hear a lot of people call punches in this game M1s. 
and M1s are simply mouse ones. They're your left click and your mouse button. So just so you don't get confused, M1s are punches. I'll call them punches so you kind of still understand it so you don't have to translate it yourself. But if you ever see it, just know M1 is a punch. So go ahead and do one punch now. That's a punch. It's really simple. Now you can do up to five punches in a combo. The last, the fifth punch always being the finisher. So you can either click five times or not five. So you can either click until you get to five punches, but the best way I would do it is to hold it. This is something you should learn now before you do it later, is you can hold your punches and it will do it for you. As you can see, this fling them away. The punches are actually really good because they do about 20-ish damage. I'd say like 28. And if a player has like 120 health, let's say they round up to like 30, five punch combos should be enough to kill them. And if you can do and if you can do punches, then you're already doing better than 70% of the player base. So go ahead and just follow along with me. Go to a dummy and just start punching it. You can hold it, do whatever. But make sure you also sprint with it. To remember to sprint is you can either hold left shift or you can click in your left stick to sprint. So you want to just keep punching and kill the dummy only using punches. Now of course, punches have different variants to them. And I won't be covering it now because that's really intermediate stuff and you're, if you're starting out, that's too much to actually understand. But punches by itself are great because they actually stun your opponent for a bit and you can fit in moves with them. So it's really important to actually learn how to do good punches. If you are curious about some of the variations though, there are stuff like down slam punches where you can do a down slam combo. You can also fling them up into the air. And you can also do some other things like kick them to the side. There's a lot of ways to punch, but I would stick with the best way, which is just do a ground combo. These are a solid way to get damage out, and they're very easy to pull off. So get used to punching, because you're going to want to learn how to actually time your M1s. That is such a big skill that if you can learn this early on, you'll be doing a lot better than everyone else. So time your M1s. So now let's go over the moves. This is what a lot of characters have that differentiate them from each other. So each character has a total of eight moves. It has four moves in his base and four moves in his ultimate. So as you can see, I have at the bottom these four red squares. I have Gatling, Bazooka, Rocket, and Pistol. So to use them on PC, you just press one, two, three, or four. And on Xbox, it will show you which button you have to actually press. So let's use Gatling. This is Luffy's barrage type of thing and it will actually be really good for combos so you can just use it on a dummy here and you can see it does a bunch of punches it's really good move solid bazooka here will knock them away 30 damage rocket here like propels you towards them and stand them down and pistol is some type of ranged move where you just do like a quick punch that's luffy's moves for now with the four moves. We're gonna go over his ultimate later. But what you should know is that you can combine moves with punches so you can do in the mid combo. So if you remember, Gatling is you throw like a Gatling full of punches. That's what you said to remember it. So I want you to go onto a dummy and I want you to punch them about three or four times and then do Gatling. So it will look somewhat like this. That is the very basic of combos using punches and moves to string a new combo together. So I would just keep practicing with this. I would just do this one more time, just so you understand it. And I would punch afterwards because you can punch afterwards a Gatling. So I'll explain what this means. In ABA, there's gonna be three types of moves. There's gonna be a combo extender, which is Gatling. A combo extender is, it extends your combo. That means you can do moves afterwards without them getting out of it. Or having a chance to. So Gatling is a combo extender. Meaning I can do it at the start of a combo. And I can still continue. Because as you can see here. If I do Gatling here. And then continue to punch. I'm able to extend my combo. So it's a combo extender. Bazooka is a combo finisher. A combo finisher. Means that you can finish your combos with it. But you cannot follow up with it. So as you can see here. Because Bazooka flings them away. If I do punches. And then Bazooka, it can finish my combo off. But I cannot, you know, go over to them in time and start doing another combo because they have enough time to run away and recover and all that. 
as a combo finisher. And combo starters are mainly moves that you use to actually get yourself into the combo. So Gatling is a good example of a combo starter because if they, you know, they hit the move, then they're in the combo. Rocket is also a good example because Rogue Rocket is also a combo extender to some extent. But you can see it more it's like a combo starter where if you go over to them and I can start punching them. And then that's the finisher. But a pit pistol pistol is more of a move you're supposed to just throw out there unexpectedly just to catch them by surprise. So for Luffy's moveset, that's the four moves you should know. And I would memorize and take some time to actually understand these four moves. You're going to be wanting to learn how to combo your punches with it all. So we're going to learn here a little combo. We're going to do some punches into Gatling. And Gatling can be combo extended. So we're going to do punches after Gatling into Rocket. And then more punches and then finish it off with Bazooka. So this sounds like a lot, but you're going to look at how I do it. I'm going to do one, two, three, Gatling. One, two, three, Rocket to send them down. Now, I'm going to have to turn around here because, as you can see here, I go this way. I'm going to have to quickly turn around. Just remember that. And then I'm going to punch, 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 and then bazooka. It's okay if you don't actually make it a full combo where they have, like, space in between. I want you to just get used to using moves in between your punches. Because if you can do this, then you're going to worry about what moves you can and can't do when. So, just start doing that. And if you want, you can even try to invent yourself a new combo. But that is the very basics of it. Your health bar and your awakening bar. So at the very top, you can see a huge green bar. That is your health bar. If it goes down all the way to zero, then you die. It's simple. Your red bar will fill up as you do damage. And if you get it all the way full, you can awaken. So you press G to awaken on keyboard and mouse. And up on the D-pad to awaken on Xbox. We're not going to be awakening yet, but we'll cover that moveset. But usually awakenings are like the game changer of the character. They become much better and they have a brand new moveset and you can turn the tide with them. But the next mechanic I want to cover, and this is a really important mechanic that a lot of people don't use early on, is blocking. So, so as you block, you can hold E or F and on Xbox you hold X. Now blocking is a lot more important than you think it is. So if I were to just take an attack here from this attack dummy. I would lose a lot of health as you see my health going down. I'm taking unnecessary damage that I could be blocking. So I'm just going to go up to this dude and start blocking him. And as you can see, I just managed to avoid four hits. Now I'm going to explain why I kind of left for that last hit. Because as you know, if you do five punches, this little kick here at the end is your finisher. That's your finisher. So you'll be thinking, oh, I can just hold block all the time. But no, that's not the case. This game has something called guard breaks. And if you get hit with the move that is a guard break, this little finisher kick will break your guard. You will get stunned and you can get punished for it. And if you get punished, it's basically it's like a counter. Uh, it's like you did something, so now they're going to counter you for it. You know, if you're blocking here and I'm going to get hit from this, I'm going to block these punches, but now I get block broken here. I was going to punch me afterwards. And bam. That is a guard break. So your finisher right here is a guard break. Also, you have some moves that guard break as well. So you can test out the moves that guard break on a block dummy. So just for now, I would focus on try understanding that this is a guard break. Try punching and just understand that last hit is a guard break. And then you could do something like a combo afterwards with it. Guard break them and then do a combo. And if they block, then you know that you are not exactly doing a true combo. Now, I'll explain what true combos are now. So when it comes to actually doing your combos, you're going to want the majority of your combos to be true. A true combo is when you have no time to escape the combo. So for example, a combo is just a series of inputs. But a true combo is where you have to do the whole combo. You, you cannot get out of it. So I'm going to show you right here. This right here is a true combo. Because the block dummy had no time to block. But this right here is not a true combo.
that's not because it blocks so a true combo allows them no time to get out of it while an untrue combo is still strong if they aren't paying attention but it's not the best way because they can still get out of it and even punish you sometimes back for it so just so you know that's the two set of combos true and untrue you should mainly start to look for combos where you can't get out of it so we just covered blocking and actual combos but a very underused mechanic is dashing so actually you dash you press q on keyboard and mouse or you press y on xbox the dashing is really useful for getting yourself into someone if you want to dash into a punch because normally if i were to just do this it would just kind of be weird i would not really hit this that much right but if i dashed into this punch i set myself up a lot better and i position myself that i'm not like here punching i'm right in you know i'm right in front of him instead of being here i'm right in front of them and it's just a nice way to get close the distance a dash closes the distance and it can also make distance because uh, something a lot of people do not know about this game is you can block and dash so you don't have to be a sitting duck while you hold block because see if i was to hold block here and i have to move back i would probably get block broken right just pretend right i'm uh, moving back now i get block broken and then that just defeats the purpose of blocking so what you're gonna do is if you see yourself getting hit you just dash out of it so you can dash and block that's a very important thing you can do dashing don't underrate it that can be the difference between you losing a game and winning just simply out if you're dashing into them and closing the distance so think of dashing as a tool where you can make distance or close distance it's a, it's a gap closer in a sense so i'm gonna go ahead and just cover them one last time we have q which is the dash e or f is to block i prefer f but you can choose whatever wsad to block i mean that's self-explanatory and shift or left shift to run you can also jump in this game if you press space right click does not do anything so don't right click and left click is to punch it's a very simple move set and you also have these moves you have one two three four that you can press to actually use moves of course moves have variations they're used differently upon different characters but for luffy it's simple you just press one two three or four to actually use it also just a couple other things i want to mention is the combo counter so as you can see here, if I'm starting to punch, you can see like a little combo counter on the left here. This is mainly important for casual, for trying to build points. Because the more combo meter you have, the more points you get. That's just something you should know. And also the next thing is your leaderboard on the right hand side here. So points do not equal damage. Points, as I said, rack up from your combo meter. That was Luffy. I want to actually cover his ultimate now. Once we cover his ultimate, I'm going to talk about the other characters and what you do from here. But I just want you to know, each character has a different moveset, and they have 8 moves in total. So now I just want to cover Luffy's ultimate. So remember, in ultimate, you can actually get it by doing damage, and you fill up this red bar at the top. So to actually use your ultimate, you press G. But I want you to know, using your ultimate, except for one character in this game, which is All Might, will refill your health all the way up and now your bar will slowly start to deplete until zero which is when you lose your ultimate so we're gonna go ahead and press it <laughs> as you can see we got to full health and our bar is starting to deplete i'm gonna be a little quick here so we don't waste too much time jet gatling is like gatling but, uh faster and more damage it is a good move jet bazooka is a teleporting version of bazooka it is a very strong move and it's something that i always just say if you have the move just spam it like there's no reason not to because you can't jump it if you try to jump over it you're going to still get hit and if you block it then you're going to get block broken it is a great move jet pistol is just a faster version of pistol and gear third is luffy's big ultimate move this gets rid of his ultimate however if you actually land it it can one-shot people. And it does that at a certain distance. So that's also really important to not use your move that's big because you're going to waste your whole ult. So use it wisely. I would stick to using your big final move towards the end of your ultimate. So you can use your ultimate normally and then have like a final move to actually finish it. 
Also in training, I just want to say something in training here. These two pads can give you your ultimate. So this is your ultimate pad. You can get your ultimate stepping on the blue pad and the red pad will instantly kill you. Okay, so we checked out Luffy's ultimate. I would now recommend you get familiar with all eight moves. Make sure if I were to ask you like, what would this move do? You know exactly what it is. And if you can combo with it, that's very important. And get your ultimate again, do whatever, do it in your base. And I want you to know now your base is your normal form without your ultimate. That's what I mean when I say base. And your ultimate form is where you actually have the new moves. Because that's how you learn your character more, knowing what their moves really do and how to use them. And once you learn the moves and you start to feel a little bit bored of PTS Luffy, I'll go ahead and start picking a new starter character. I would not obsess over picking too many new ones because you want to find a main for now so you can learn the game. But I'm going to go ahead and go over each starter character and really what they introduce. But a lot of people ignore starter characters. They assume starter characters are weak and beginners, but they, they still hold up and are very viable. A thing you learn in this game is that every character is good. There's no such thing as a bad character. It's just how you play. Sure, there's some characters that are easier to play than others, but I don't think there's a bad character because I can beat you with the worst character in the game. And if you have the most OP character in the game, like it's not that big of a difference. Every character is viable to some extent. So every starter teaches you a lesson and whether or not you want to learn the lesson yourself is important. But I think you should use the starters you want. And I'm just going to tell you what exactly each starter teaches you. And try to figure it out yourself. See what they actually do. And what I mean with the lesson. I'm going to go back to the character screen. So you can see all the starters. And I'm going to explain what each one does. So you just understand the lessons they give. Okay, well starting out with PTS Luffy. The one you just played. The more you play with him. Is where you actually will learn. There's going to be multiple ways to make a combo. Luffy has some of the most comboable moves in the game. Every one of his moves are almost a combo extender, except for Pistol really being the only exception, maybe Bazooka. So you're going to learn with his moves that he has different ways to manage combos. You don't have to start with Gatling. You can maybe use Rocket first and then do Gatling after. So you're going to learn that there are multiple ways to make combos. PTS Goku or Namek Goku teaches you that starter characters are still absolutely broken to all hell and uh, you can still get whooped by one. I can get whooped by a good PTS Goku, and then you should not underrate them. Uh, Goku's just broken, just uh, be careful with him. So Naruto will teach you that some moves have other functions. Not every move is what it seems like. You can use other moves in a different way. You can combine certain moves. For example, Clone Throw can be used with Rasengan to actually launch you forward with the Rasengan. There's multiple ways to use Naruto. And also in his ultimate, you can use Rasengan and Chakra Arm to make like an auto tracking Rasengan. So not every move has only one function. So Ichigo is also kind of an interesting one. Because he teaches you that not every move should be used. Like Lunch for example is a pretty bad move in my opinion. And I think it's a move that a lot of people just spam because they think it's free damage. But a good player will counter you and they will take advantage of it. Kind of learn what end lag is and not to use certain moves at one time. Also, you figure out that Ichigo has a crazy ass hitbox and can pretty much hit all his guard breaks. Just watch out for lunch. Deku is a lot like Naruto in that the moves have different functions, but Deku has different variations of the move. But for example, Detroit Smash has two variations one in the air, of if you do it, it will smash them downwards, so you can continue a combo like that. Or the other way is that you do it on the ground or just knock them away. You can also learn here that you can cancel some moves or if you click earlier, you'll do the move earlier. What Deku really teaches you to learn your character well, that different moves have different variations to them. Now Jonathan teaches you absolutely nothing other than the fact that a starter character does not mean it's a beginner character. Because Jonathan is way too advanced for beginners. So I would just not touch him unless you know what you're doing with them. Not only does Tantra have some really solid combos and a strong ultimate, he teaches you move management. Knowing that you only have one guard break, you have to use it wisely. So if you use that guard break, you're going to have to use other moves to compensate. And then also the same thing, where you're going to have to use different moves at certain times, kind of like Luffy. But Luffy's is more, you can use different moves to kind of achieve the same goal. 
where Tanjiro is more you have to find an opening and use your moves carefully. And aside from that, those are all the starters. Remember, each starter has a lesson. And make sure you choose one that you'd probably have more fun with. Now, if you want my recommendations for starters you should choose, because you really don't have a preference, I always stick with PTS Luffy and Ichigo. They both teach you really important lessons and are very easy to pick up. And also, just another thing, make sure you find a character that you want to save towards. But now that you actually kind of figured out what you want to do, the biggest thing is to check for guard breaks. More, pe more people are going to start blocking. And a simple punch combo won't really block break them, so you're going to have to depend on your moves. And also, most importantly, learn what moves can combo. But the last thing I wanted to say before I end this all is that most of the things you learn are going to be with experience. Try to stay away from casual because casual is crazy. So if you have a friend, remember, I would do private servers. If you don't, just do ranked. Ranked is a great way to get at the game too. And there's one thing I would say is block more than you think you should. So don't be afraid to block. I think aggressiveness is something a lot of people don't have. They're not aggressive enough. Don't play the way you want your opponent to play. The most important thing you should know is to have fun. Win or lose, or the night do horrible or great. It's still a damn game. Don't get so worked up over it. But that is really the end of the beginner's guide. I really hope I have helped at least some of you and share if this is all just repeat information. I hope you just look forward to the intermediate stuff because the intermediate and the advanced stuff, I promise you, it will definitely help a lot. And I hope you all beginners will get to that point. I know you guys all will. But enjoy the game. Plus, if you guys did enjoy this, please leave a like. It really encourages me to keep making this type of stuff.